You know, I think a lot of people are a little bit intimidated by the rigging process on different pieces of electronics. And we spent a lot of time recently with the Garmin technical staff to try to create a lot of information that's gonna help people understand really how easy it is to rig up and set up the Garmin LiveScope transducers, the units to be able to communicate however you want. And to me, a lot of the features are just as simple as being able to read, adjust, push buttons, and run some of the wires. But these guys, they've rigged hundreds and thousands of top touring pros boats over the years and they've learned a lot of tricks so let's learn more from the team at garmin now we're rigging a brand new ranger boat for wade and it's going to have four graphs on it it's going to have a neiman network a garmin marine network a force trolling motor it'll have all the garmin bells and whistles when we get done with this boat these are all the six foot drop cables. I need one of these for each one of the four graphs and for the GPS modules. So at the bow of the boat, we're gonna have two graphs, one forward, one aft, and a GPS module. Um, so we're gonna start building our NEMA network at the bow and work our way back to the transom. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the whole NEMA network together on the deck so that when we look at this NEMA network, we know there's no errors in how the network's been built. It's all linear in its construction. This is a 120 ohm terminator, and you're required to have one of these at both ends of your NEMA network. Your NEMA network is a communication device that's used to allow your graphs to talk to a GPS module, to an outboard engine, to any NEMA compatible device that you have in the boat. I'm gonna take one of the terminators, we'll put it right on our multi-port T, and we'll have a multi-port T at the bow and at the console boat. So now we're gonna hook up our short cables and they just go right onto the multi-port T, same as the Terminator did. The only difference between these and the Terminator is the Terminator goes on the horizontal leg of your T, and this is gonna be connected to a module and the, the uh, graphs. So these all have to come out of the vertical leg of your T. If you, if you hook up a graph or or a module or any NEMA device to the horizontal side of your T, you can crash the communication. So what it'll give you is an intermittent NEMA 2000 signal. It'll come and it'll go. And this is a back, backbone cable. It also comes out of the horizontal side of the T right here. And this is how we're gonna get our communication from the bow of the boat to the console of the boat to the transom of the boat for any NEMA device. So NEMA stands for National Marine Electronics Association. That's a standard that was developed back in 2002, 2003. And the marine industry was trying to move into some of the communication levels that the automotive industry was already well into and make it to where you could take this GPS map, this GPS map, this GPS map, and, and communicate data from this GPS device, this GPS device, or another uh, graph, or a temp sensor, or any device that's NEMA compatible. Here's something that's real important. You actually need larger wires to the front of the boat to be able to carry the current load required to run everything up here. Example here, we're gonna have an Echomap Ultra 126 here. We're gonna have a GPS module up here. There's a lot of current draw to the bow of the boat, which is 22 foot away from the battery. So the further away from the battery you get, the larger diameter wire you need. And Ranger has done a very good job here of running number six wire. They run that from the battery or from the brain box at the console up to the bow for us. So that keeps us from having to repower the front of the boat. Then they run it into this block and jump it out into their barrier strip. So now that gives me the good, clean, heavy duty current to this barrier strip that'll carry that load. 
These wires are for your trolling motor and these two have to be kept separate. If this is somehow interfaced into this barrier strip, chances are you're gonna get noise on your sonar. So that's the reason why this is run up the port side of the boat, these are run up the starboard side of the boat. They're, they're separating those as much as possible. So I'm gonna build our multi-port T at the console so we can get the bow tied to the console and then we'll move from there to the to the transom to the stern. We're at the console now. We've got the bow set up for our NEMA. We're going to run a 12-inch echo map, 12-inch echo map, and this yellow cable right here is the power node for our NEMA network. That's how this network gets its power from the boat. And it doesn't draw a lot of power. There's not a lot of current going through this, but it is real important that this be in good power. It's good that it be switched. All Rangers have uh, master breakers on them. So if you load this boat on the trailer and you flip your breakers off, then this cable is dead regardless of, of how you have it wired. And, and it should be dead. If it's not, you're pulling about 500 milliamps out of your battery 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So the power node is a device, just like these two graphs are, so it has to go into the vertical side of your T, not the horizontal side. This connection here is our backbone cable that ties us to the bow of the boat. We'll have another one here that ties us to the transom of the boat. And then our last terminator will go at the very end at the transom of the boat. On a Ranger boat, they have this cover uh, on the backsplash back here. And I'm pulling this cover so that we can look down in the hull and see where the power pole pumps are mounted. Because we're gonna mount a through hole temp sensor down here. We're also gonna mount a side view and clear view transducer under here. And we don't wanna drill up in the bottom of those reservoirs on those two pumps. So we gotta know where they are in there in relationship to where we're gonna drill holes. All right, so we've got all the screws out of the cover, and now you just pick it up and slide it out of the way, and now it gives you access to see where both of the power pole pumps are mounted and anything else that you might drill up into to damage the boat. <laughs> what I'm doing here is looking for the place to mount my GPS uh, 24 GPS module and heading sensor, and where I like to put them on a Ranger is right here in the bend of the boat right on the gunnel. So we're gonna get up in here, we're gonna check under the gunnel right here to be sure this is not full of flotation foam. And if it's not, then we'll actually set up our diagram here, mark our holes, drill them, and mount the module. So we've looked under the hull here, under the top cap, and this is an open area here to where we can reach up under this to connect the cable to it. The product comes with a template in it, you just, Cut the template out, set it on whatever your clear location is, and then use a small hole saw to cut the center hole for the cable to connect to the T and the module on the other end. Now it's gonna go around and connect into this T here. And so now the module just goes down and this is where the set screw is gonna go into the, into the bracket. So you just clicks into place. Now we put the set screw in it, we're done. So we have a multi-port T here, and we're gonna utilize three of the four devices. Then we'll run the backbone back. We've got our terminator up here on this end of the network. Our backbone goes all the way back here to another multi-port T at the console. And we have a drop here for one of the graphs at the console. Here's a drop for the second graph at the console here and here. Our yellow cable is our power. It has a black for the negative, a shield, and a positive with a three amp fuse in it. Then we've got a backbone coming out the other side. It goes back to the stern where we have two T's back here and our last terminator at the very end. This connection right here is for a temperature sensor, which will go in the live well. 
and this one here is for this GPS module, which we've already ran in there. We'll just screw it onto this T, and then we'll tuck our T's up under the gunnel here so that they stay dry and out of harm's way, and if we need to get to them, we know where they're at. We've got our backbone cable. The female right here is going towards the, the stern of the boat. We got our other backbone cable running up to the bow. Rangers provided us some zip tie anchors so we can take this whole NEMA backbone and secure it right inside the console. Coil all our cables up and make sure they're nice and uh, secured. They won't break loose while they're running across the lake. We're all ready to connect up the bow to our NEMA network. This is our backbone cable runs through the tube to the console. We're gonna connect it up to our multi-port T. Here's our terminator. So we're all complete here. This will get zip tied down in here. Each one of these legs, one of them will go to our GPS module, one of them will go to one of the graphs, and one of them will go to the other graph. We're good to go. Okay, now we're routing our cables out of the console to the graphs through our precision mount. It's got two cable ports. So we've got a power for each graph. We've got a 20-foot Garmin Marine network cable that's going up to the bow. We've got a six-foot Garmin Marine network cable, which is jumping over to our, our port unit. We've got our GT8 in-hole transducer, which has a 12-pin adapter going into it, so we can plug that back uh, into our Equimap Ultra. We've also got our six-foot droppers off our NEMA backbone coming to each graph. Well, we just got done running everything, and now we finally get to put the graphs on and make sure that they'll uh, fire up and we can read everything. So this is Garmin Lakeview G3 Ultra West card. We're going to put this unit in the one that he primarily uses for mapping so he can get detailed contour lines, Navionics data, his relief shading, satellite imagery, and all that right on his unit. Now this covers everything just a hair over the east side of the Mississippi River west that you can uh, get your, your one foot contours, updated Navionics chart data, uh, your relief shading, and your satellite imagery for all those lakes in that, in that region.